We all love gifts, okay? Child, adult, male or female, we all love gifts. Honestly, I'm here to meet anyone who doesn't love gifts yet. But the truth is, we love gifts best when they come from people we think love us. But the truth, you can't be too sure if a chair loves you. And neither can you, Billy, will be so sure, ni will be faithful. These days, the commodity market is so volatile. And it looks like year on year, inflation, depreciation. Oh, Lord. Anytime I hear those things in the news, just say, market, now you're basa. What beats my mind, though, about gifts is that these days, people literally ask, or should I say, actually beg for gifts? I thought gifts were meant to be pleasant, voluntary surprises from a giver to, you know, express a virtuoso and things like that. Anyway, I don't know much, but once someone I am particularly fond of promised me a gift, oh my God, I was excited and I was expectant. This person thought me the saying, I promise I will explain this in another episode for those who don't know what it means. But back to this person uh, who promised me the gift, intelligent chap, master's degree holder from the U.S., pan-Africanist, spiritus. Just say, uh, ours was a uh, fermentership you know, sort of relationship, a fermentorship sort of re relationship. Simply put, he was a friend and a mentor at the same time. On his promise of a gift, I had a little problem. You know, his fashion sense hardly made sense to me. So I prayed against anything, any gifts that would be relating to fashion. Yes, I was choosing in my mind what I wanted, you know. He was also a typical book-long lecturer, you know, whose trousers always looked like a jute bag on him. <laughs> and so <laughs> I was just praying against that. Again, I prayed against the idea of receiving a book as a gift. He had already given me two books, and I hadn't touched any. Now, the day for the gift presentation took too long in coming for me. But finally, it did. It did come. And the dude reached for his bag, and my heart skipped a beat. Eurade, laptop. Eurade, laptop. Eurade, laptop. Of course, these were silent prayers I was saying to myself. Then Opana reached for his bag. This is what he brought out as a gift for me. A cheap Chinese print can take over singing notebook. Hey, Akwawe Pa, Eurade, I hate you so much right now. That was... Dead silence for some surreal two minutes. The way I was planning of insulting him in my mind, eh, I think he could tell from the look on my face. So he quickly broke the silence and struck me with words that have since remained with me. He said with some fresh American accent, Oh, Caleb, you know, some gifts are costless, nonetheless, such could be priceless. In my mind, I was actually your chip. Oh, sorry, I may crack on a bravo. He, well, he continued to say, this is a token of my admirations for your ABC qualities. Uh, of course, I'm not going to share them with you. They were prophetic and personal. <laughs> but believe me, in my darkest days, this is one of the things I remember and I find light in them. I have since kept this book from January 15th, 2012, when I first had it. And I've also learned to appreciate most Little, seemingly costless, nonetheless priceless gifts. Like your time and your love for Backpage, your news satirical show on City TV with me, Caleb Kuda. When we return from this break, there is a lot we are going to share with you, like Salaga people going gaga while Ghana is sliced like pizza. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Backpage, your new satirical show on City TV. My name is Caleb Kuda. Yeah. So, in this episode, Dr. Baumia is under arrest. Well, we'll tell you how the city has put him under house arrest. House arrest, that's the key word. Also, like I said, Ghana has been sliced like pizza, but Salaga people are going gaga. Later, uh, we'll bring you more Mbelete in Tadi as schoolboys and girls fake their own kidnap 
currently on the move to police custody. All these and more on your news satire call show on City TV back page with me, Caleb Kuda. But first, many Ghanaians recall some lectures be where President Kufado said that his uncle, the great J.B. Dankwa, was the supplier of the name Ghana. Those were the days where the wind of change was blowing like monsoon winds. It is said that the convoy of the president could be stopped in any town in Ghana where the roads were seen to be in top shape. There and then, the name of the road could be changed to, say, Park Grant Historic Road or Akwaje Dombo Highway. Sometimes even specific street lights are renamed just to prove that Ghana has founders and not Nkrumah as its sole founder. So when the president, out of the blue, mentioned that J.B. Dankwa is, uh, when he mooted the idea that J.B. Dankwa is the man who brought the name Ghana for the then Gold Coast, many received the news with some trepidation. Even though he said this in passing, will the president rename Ghana after his uncle, J.B. Dankwa? What will we say our nationality is Dankwa's? To wit, Dankwa Asifwa, that is, descendants of Dankwa? Hmm. Well, thanks be to God, for it was only by his mercies that we have not been renamed. <laughs> I beg, shout amen. Amen. But here's what is troubling me. The grandson of the late J.B. Dankwa, late J.B. Dankwa Edu, then MP for Ibuakwa North, was, in the words of his widow, brutally assassinated in barbarous Tudor fashion, unquote, in his Shashi residence. Three years down the line, there is... In the words of his widow, neither a sign of justice for him nor for his children and her. This, my dear friends, is heartbreaking. She went on to compare how the assailant of an MP who was brutally shot and stabbed in London was sentenced to life imprisonment within five months. Whereas here in Ghana, 36 months after her husband's killing, Ludu, Owari, or Chacha, are the games that the late MP's widow likens the process of justice to. Indeed, this is shameful. The part that Chirase Echamia Wokra is when she narrates how in a room full of men, a men-only CID team, she was asked whether she wears waist beads. And the, the, the part that killed me on top is when a married police CID man called to tell her how sexy she looks and why she must marry him. I wasn't there, first and foremost. I cannot confirm these, secondly. But knowing how decadent, morally bankrupt, and indisciplined most of the lower ranks we see every day on the streets are, it won't be far-fetched to conclude that the inspiration from a lewd or indecorous commanders is what we are seeing. But seriously, how? I mean, how? How can... Police CID officers sink this law. 36 months on, no justice, just impunity and disrespect. How in JB Dunquist Ghana? Yeah, things are falling apart. How in Kwame Nkrumah's Ghana? While we strive to raise funds for a national cathedral, I just want to remind us that we don't need to raise funds to find a text in Exodus 22 22, almost like election 2020, but this one is 22 22. You shall not afflict any widow or orphan. You shall not afflict any widow or orphan. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe, we will make serving justice, right? We will make serving justice to widows and vulnerable people a priority of priorities in Ghana, where indiscipline and injustice is fast replacing our motto, freedom and justice. And I mean, I will say it again. If you don't see my sister by the close of this week, serious, we will, we will strike. We will strike. Blood will flow in Western region. Seriously. Because that stupid guy cannot take my sister for up to three, three, getting to three months now. So if she's alive, then where's my sister? Where's my sister? Welcome to Ghana, people. I mean, we all feel disappointment, Charlie. We all feel disappointment. You remember on this show, we said it couldn't have been possible for some you do talk wills, the Nigerian kidnapper, to escape cells without help from police officers. Sadly, attention shifts from court, from finding the kidnapped girls to the police CID officer and some others who aided the Nigerian kidnapper to break cells. 
And it is not as if the state is interested in having them apprehended. Though. The case is adjourned after 15 minutes. And according to sisters of one of the kidnapped girls, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not fair. And dear Minister of National Insecurity, can you heed the words of this troubled sister? If you don't see my sister by the close of this week, serious, we will, we will strike. We will strike. Blood will flow in Western region. Seriously. Because he, he, that stupid guy cannot take my sister for up to three, three, getting to three months now. So if she's alive, then where's my sister? Where's my sister? Where's my sister? I mean, it can't be that these heavily built men we saw at Ayawa so are only good for political vendetta. It doesn't make sense. And while we are busy looking for the kidnapped girls, some teenagers in the western region took advantage of the kidnapping stories to kidnap themselves. The students are Queno Divrizi, a 17-year-old student of GSTS, Antonio Ose Prempre, 18-year student of GSTS, Daniel Kwesi Esel, 17 years from Fijai, Elijah Sam, 16 years from TTI, Caleb Whitbridge Aitetego, 16 years from TTI, and the only lady, Evelyn Ejapon, 19 years from Tadisco. The Western Regional Police PRO, DSP Olivia Diku, giving the details of the case, told City News that the say students are part of nine persons who have recently been prosecuted for faking kidnapping, which is a worrying trend now. January, when the issue became public, people started faking that they have been kidnapped. What happened was that uh, Devries Kwenu informed Antonio Seprempe, who is a friend uh, in school, that he wanted money. So he wanted ways and means to uh, get to the parents to give him some money. So they came up with a plan. And according to the information we have, Antonio said, oh, I know of a boy called Daniel who can help. So all these six people gathered in Daniel's room. Uh, they took a picture of Devries uh, as if kidnappers he had been kidnapped with a knife on him they sent the pictures to their parents demanding this amount of money so I think immediately it happened they informed the school and I want to state that the school authorities really helped in this direction for us to get to the bottom of it so initially it was reported as being kidnapped so immediately uh, <laughs> our investigative operations have to start uh, through the, uh, the assistance of the school Headmaster and the senior head, the housemaster, especially, we got to know that he went out with a friend. They took Eziat. So, when the friend was questioned, uh, he began to give the information. So, through that, we were able to get all the six people. Hey, why? I mean, at this tender age, these teenagers have made their way into Ghana Police Hall of Fame. I don't know. <laughs> Where's the region? But this one, Onyazoye. Your pair charm penny for one check and more from man and yet the man or bear the more pier no why do so on your fine anyway IGP David Asantia appear to he's been appealing in other words begging political parties and penny for your strong why a strong try and disband political vigilante groups why this is what the IGP has been saying there was an appeal to these political parties to denounce the vigilante groups and then also any groupings who refer to themselves as vigilantes belonging to any parties. If they are found out, what we'll do is that we're going to profile them and we'll continue from there. We'll invite them for questioning and we'll do our profile of these groups. You know, you can't walk ahead when you have your, head, your, your hands in its mouth. Thank you. Uh, for coming, dear IGP. Next story. Interior Minister and National Insecurity Minister have been contradicting themselves. The mission of the IGP is that he did not deploy any armed personnel on the day and that his personnel were deployed at the 137 police stations at where at all the stations there was neither violence no any other incident let alone shooting inside. There was nothing like that. As per our standard processes, the national security operatives are not allowed to hold weapons during operations. 
And I'm advised that on that Thursday operation, the operatives did not carry guns. On the other hand, all the uniformed policemen who were part of the operation were armed. Seriously, Ghana people, our Minister of National Insecurity has said it all. Mumpinidwe, yeah, Kandapa, <laughs> you do all. We have the men, Ampa. Uh, yes. So let's take a break here. When we return, there is more. minutes every weekday catching up with all the trending social media conversations of the day if you tweet it we'll read it we might just even skype you 30 minutes is all it takes so use the hashtag three zero minutes on social media to catch our attention join the most interactive social media tv show weekdays at 5 p.m only on city tv Welcome back. This is Backpage on City TV. My name is Caleb Kuda. Drawing the map of Ghana in the coming days in the pressure of an exam hall will certainly be a daunting task. An old lady called me some time ago to ask, Caleb, I hear government is creating new regions. Where will the government get the extra parcels of land from? I mean, the hustle is real. And I pity geography students. From 10 regions, we have moved to 16 more regions. But I have a plan that can help teachers and students. Simply take Ghana as a jumbo-sized pizza. Government didn't acquire parcels of land in any of our neighboring countries because we have created new regions. No, 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 that's not what it is. Rather, this jumbo-sized pizza called Ghana has been sliced into smaller pieces with the promise or the hope that more people can get a bite of the meat in the pizza. Because it looks like the pizza has been concentrated in a few, the meat has been concentrated in a few places. So now, four regions, Volta, Western, Bunahafo, and Northern regions have been partitioned or sliced like pizza. Our Czech Northern region has been sliced into three now, yeah? So we have Savannah North, Savannah region, Northeast, and then Northern region. Please, for capital regions, press three. You see the capitals on the screen. You will also see uh, that s someone actually was asking where Brekum and Betim will be in the Brunahafa regions because the Brunahafa regions have, ha, region has also been partitioned or sliced. I don't want to say because chances are that in the future, another government will move some of the towns to other regions from the way we are doing that is, you know. So now Damongo was named as the regional capital for the Savannah region. And the people of Salaga were not happy. They went gaga. Unlike I also West Wagon, seven persons have been arrested already. Haven't you all missed Dr. Baumia though? 
It's been a long time since I heard from him or saw him. I asked a friend who works in the corridors of power, and he was like, mm, the vice president has traveled to Canada. I was like, oh, when did the vice president travel to Canada that I didn't get to know? That was when he explained to me that, no, the vice president has not left for Canada. He's rather traveled to Canada uh, because he has decided not to be speaking much these days. I wondered, has the vice president run out of promises? I asked. It was a very naive question. Oh, never. That was the response. Except that the city has kept him quiet and under house arrest. But let's journey back into time when Ghana's economic waste kid, Dr. Baomia, was in top form. The Ghana city has obtained the dubious distinction of being the weakest performing currency in Africa at this point in time. <laughs> Interestingly, the NDC Green Book claims exchange rate stability as one of their unprecedented <laughs> achievements. <laughs> In an open economy with market determination of prices, exchange rate movements are the most important indicator of underlying macroeconomic fundamentals. As the saying goes, when in doubt, observe the exchange rate. The lesson from history for governments is that you cannot manage the economy with propaganda. In, in fact, you can engage in all the propaganda you want, but if the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. <laughs> the type of free fall that we are seeing with the city exchange rate is a vote of no confidence by market players in the management of the economy. Indeed, many market players presently are pricing goods with the, with the expectation that the exchange rate is going to be two to one. It is almost there. The scary part of this is that we are only just past the first quarter of the year, and we have three more quarters to go, and the situation could therefore get worse. Well, I was listening to a news bulletin in account and the presenter was like, yo, a tear for a near tear to say, I can't see the no atrope. I'm like, what does it mean? What in heaven's name does it mean for something to trope? Anyway, someone told me when tea bread falls in water, it's tropes. So that is the current state of the Ghana city, atrope. That's why you can't do much with the Ghana city these days. Let's pray for the city, people of God, in these times. We need to pray for the city. So close your eyes and let's pray in the name of Baumia, oh, Ghana's whiskey economic city. Arise, arise. That's how we will get the city arising this year. We have to be praying maybe until the National Cathedral is completed. the news, analysis, projections, and policies that affect your business. Curated and delivered in a simple and timely format. Watch Business Dashboard, your most comprehensive source of business news, every weekday at 7 p.m. only on City TV. Business Dashboard on City TV is sponsored by ADB Bank. Truly a Greek and more. p.m. 
City Newsroom brings you analysis of the major news stories of the day. In-depth, comprehensive, and researched. It's one hour of local and international news from 8 to 9 p.m. It's the City Newsroom. Weekdays on City TV. Road trip of a lifetime. 97.3 CTFM and CTTV's Heritage Caravan is back. Get to experience culture and explore Ghana's favorite tourist destinations on the Heritage Caravan. Eight days, eight regions, amazing destinations, and exciting events. Mark up your calendars. The Heritage Caravan starts on the 2nd to the 9th of March 2019. Visit citynewsroom.com to register or call 0205 973 973 for more details. The Heritage Caravan 2019 is powered by 97.3 CTFM and CTTV. Welcome back. This is Backpage, your new satirical show on City TV. My name is Caleb Kuda. Now, in March this year, there will be a tour of a lifetime. From the 2nd to the 9th of March this year, you get to tour Ghana in an amazing experience called Heritage Caravan. Here's a feel of Heritage Caravan. <laughs> You certainly want to be a part of the Heritage Caravan. Great news, superb accommodation, wonderful ambience away from Accra. Learn more about the history of Ghana and great company for just 2.5k. Uh, my brother, poverty is not good. A friend of mine called and asked, 2,500 Ghana, is it not too, uh, is it, is it, uh, yeah. Well, 25 million old Ghana cities. I was like, yeah, was like, that's a lot of money, you know. I'm like, yeah, you know you deserve this rest. You know you deserve this fun. This joy is yours. But, oh, yeah, mommy, don't wear any engine. Well, how did they say? Oh, yeah, mommy, don't wear any Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, it's not good. That's all for back page, people. My name is Caleb. Thank you for the love. Tune in again and watch us same time next week. You can find us on YouTube, City TV, GH, and Backpage. And you said Backpage, you find us on Twitter. I am at Caleb Kuda, Facebook, Caleb Kuda. Whatever you do, do well to give it little things, nonetheless, priceless stuff. <laughs>